such that even if our generation is called upon to be that final generation, that millions and millions of true followers of Jesus Christ will not suffer needlessly uh, death simply because they didn't have the muscles necessary to stand by faith in the face of intense persecution. And, and may, I, may I speed on to say that this is a problem that is probably uniquely Western. Uh, the, the churches of Europe uh, and Africa and Asia have been persecuted and have lived in the terror of their faith for decades and would have very little um, of a significant change in their life uh, if we went into that final period. They know how to endure under intense persecution. The church in the West, and particularly the American church, is so weak, uh, effeminate, if I might say, to some degree, when it comes to persecution, that I think thousands and thousands would die needlessly simply because they don't know what to do because they never anticipated being here. They wouldn't claim the scripture. They wouldn't stand on the promises because they didn't think they were going to have to. And all of a sudden thrown into a disaster, uh, they panic and lose their heads uh, rather than standing quietly and confident in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And by the way, I've seen this recently in the 9-11. I saw how Christians panicked and went to pieces and uh, were, were not able to stand in the confidence and the quietness of their faith simply because they never thought it would happen. And I suppose the normalcy fallacy uh, would apply here that, hey, it's so bad, we never thought it would happen, we can't believe it, and they go into the Nile and they go into to self-preservation and some of these other issues rather than doing as Christ instructed for his believers to do, which is to stand by faith and trusting in the sovereign will of God, that God has it under control, that he has his people in his hand, and that nothing can touch us that he does not allow by his own sovereign election. That, I suppose, is the great problem.